GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. So, Fat Man. So, Sleazy. Yes, I'm back from rehab. Oh, th- I, w- I was worried about you. You know, I, I, like, I, I was, like, really, really, really worried that this was going to be an ongoing issue, as it has been for the past almost 10 years now, and Canadian Sleazy filled in perfectly, and, um... I'm I'm just glad that you are out of out of rehab and bitch I skipped whatever. rehab. We're going to talk about impact tonight on the wrestling okay. show. Welcome everyone, this is Sleazy. This is the fact. And welcome everyone to another wonderful episode. Today, we are missing a mark. He is on location with no camera. Yeah, well. Or a microphone. Because we're not wrestling journalists. We are not wrestling journalists. But that guess fucking who- early. I don't even get my great introduction from Sleazy before I gotta tell you you're an asshole. Listen, you had your moment last week. What? It's back to normal now. <laughs> it's back to normal, no. <laughs> oh, hell no. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) before we continue, I have to introduce the man they had. What the hell? You're wearing a Mega Powers shirt? Yes, sir. Ryan Williams, the Mega Powers fan, is here. Hey, oh, and you did forget, I'll throw it out early, on the reigning, defending, undisputed, two-time impact scorecard champion because i won rebellion this weekend so if you're the only one that did it are you first and last uh six people did it uh you sir i mean i know you're afraid to lose things to me being the, how you tried to cheat me out of the trivia COVID. Whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> this is like a referee's decision what's finals final son i won <laughs> so you can't change the reference. That, that's a lot because uh, UFC, which you believe is a fixed sport like wrestling that we follow, overturn decisions all the fucking time. Here's the so thing, though. I don't the follow. biggest revisionist history in the world. I don't know what you're getting on with. No, I'm talking fun. about, like, Angel Hernandez in strike zone the other night. Like, <laughs> five inches off the fucking plate. It, it's, it is what it is. Like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not my fault that, on record, you lost. So uh, no, because there, there's retractions and uh, all of this other jazz that you need to understand. So just just to kill the last part, in terms of wrestling show people, Sleazy, you were second. Uh, Dietz was third, and Mark uh, was fourth. Boss Sleazy, you were third overall because our friend Frosty, a close personal friend of the show, um, he got four more points than you. So you were still top three. And there's my segment of scorecards for the show. I I, I blame Taya Valkyrie, basically. <laughs> Dude, I had Taya Valkyrie put down to win and then went, nah, I should probably change it to Deanna Perrazzo. Like why why would I why why would I think that something foolish like that would happen? <sighs> Son of a bitch. Any rebellion? You rebellion. You're a fucking piece of shit. Anyway. Me. Sorry. Wow. See, now I'm taping the show and now work wants to text me. Um of course. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta fucking I gotta I gotta text this here. Kill Jesus time. Christ. It's not so like I, anyone here works during the fucking taping or anything. That's why hey, I don't work Mondays. You know this. <laughs> Neither does Triple H. Yeah. That's Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, I work Tuesdays. I'm better than Triple H. <laughs> Nah, uh, for uh, fine. You want to kill okay. some time? Are you ready now? All right. Yes. Are yes, you yes. Okay, ready? sir. So it took place April twenty third from Poughkeepsie. Who the fuck goes to Poughkeepsie for a pay per view? Impact. Uh, fucking fucking marks. Also uh, WWE so, too. Of course, <laughs> fuck Dave Mouser does not have star ratings out because mm. what kind of make it on the show? Right. So I got Andrew Sinclair of VoiceWrestling dot coms. Did anyone watch the pre show? <laughs> I didn't know. 
Okay, cool. So it opens up with Sleazy's favorite match. A triple threat match. Jay White versus Chris Saban versus uh, Steve uh, Macklin. 11 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, Andrew gave it three and a half stars. Sleazy, you love triple threat matches. I hate triple threat matches. Oh, wait, that's the joke. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's not funny if you have to explain it. Well, shock of shocks, I didn't like this one. Um, I am so- okay, outside the triple threat aspect, <laughs> right? Um, it, it it was a good way. It was a hot opener to start the show. I was surprised that they do the the obvious trope of one person has the victory, and well, no, wrong. We're not having that type of thing, but um, I'm surprised Jay White didn't go over. On our scorecards, I had Jay White going over, picking Saban, but Macklin is a great little person to win this opener because it was a really hot opener, and Jay White still protected because nor did he, he didn't win, but he didn't lose. He wasn't pinned. Like It, it was perfect. So Macklin now, who's going to stay with the company a lot longer than what Jay White would, well, and Jay White lost the save and at multitude of matches. So, like, I'm just surprised. I, I, I would have thought that. Well, here's the other thing: is as a general rule, New Japan's pretty protective of their talent, and to have Jay White not win on an opening match on an Impact pay per view is kind of. But he didn't get pinned. He didn't get pinned. You're right. But that's the beauty of a triple threat match. The person that's not involved in that fall. N- Unless they have a standout performance, it neither benefits or hurts them to be in that match. You know what my answer to that is? Wait it out, bro. Fucking triple threat matches suck. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to hear that from him later on in this card. You're damn fucking <laughs> right you are. <laughs> uh, I also gave it three and a half. It started slow, but it got better as it went along. It built up. The last few minutes were really good, and the right kid died. As in Saban being pinned? As Macklin winning. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you think it yeah, would have I, been better if, if Jay w- took the pin? Uh, to, honestly, as long as Macklin won the match, it, it, it didn't matter. Because, again, Jay White already lost to Saban. So who, you're, he's not protected. Like So it doesn't matter who took the pin, really. Like Saban's a former Impact World Champion. Macklin you know? looks even better now because he pinned a former, you know what I mean? Jay White's a former IWGP world champion. So it didn't matter who took the pin. Like, Macklin beat a former world champion either way. So, cool. Well, technically, he beat two former Dude, world champions. He pinned one. Yeah, yeah. Fucking triple threat matches. <laughs> uh, speaking of triple, Triple A, Reina Dorena's championship. Deanna Perrazzo defends against Ty Valkyrie. Nine minutes. Uh, Andrew gave us three and a quarter. Slazy, you're the woman's wrestling enthusiast. He's an overrating piece of shit to start. Um, wow. Brian and I had the same reaction. Literally the same reaction. Same head bob and everything. Like, <laughs> Okay, hold on. Because I feel like we're, this is the second match, and this is going to be a fucking precedent out of you all, Mike. Did you like the pay-per-view overall, yes or no? Yes. Before I get the individual picking on it. Yes, Absolutely. Uh, yes. Spoiler alert, there were matches on here that were absolutely phenomenal. This was not one of them. Here's the thing. It's going to be the matches I think suck. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. Um, I My problem is that it was too short. Um, I thought that this could have been longer. I thought um, while Taya winning was obviously a surprise to me, I thought they could have done a better job of showcasing, showcasing the fact that Taya didn't lose the title because of the whole situation with that. Um, and I think that it just, I don't know. It just, I, <laughs> to be fair, I gave it an okay match for a house show, but it, it wasn't a lot of people were jumping up and down saying this was a great match. I didn't think so. It just, it was, it was, a great was, match. It was okay. It was a good match. It's okay. It was I, I find your reasoning behind that match. Would have worked better had this match taken place in AAA, because you had the more story for AAA to build off and not. I, I, I get, I That's get fair. the point, but if that had been in AAA, they would have had more time. Being on Impact, they're gonna fight again, so why not just do the first one as a cool big title change? Like their matches are important. 
I think, uh, honestly, I would have liked a little bit more fanfare with it. I, I Not in the dead spot on a, a, a throw, frankly, a throwaway pay-per-view. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outright say it. They're, they they have, have four pay per in a year. The How is this match of the night? What? We <laughs> have two different <laughs> questions. Hey, which question do you want first? <laughs> Uh, let's said, let's try yeah. the one one of the ones with the bald guy with the glasses and the beard. Okay, the better looking one, me. So why they have four pay per views a year? How you can call this a throwaway pay per view? I'm calling it a throwaway pay per view only in the fact that it's a it's not a hugely you know promoted item. You know, it's it's an Impact Plus basically thing. You know, and you're wrong as always. Whatever. It, it, it's no different. It's the difference is. Is this backlash or is this a WrestleMania? And that's a title that honestly deserves a higher level of respect, especially when it's coming from a double champion like that. And it's like I said, on the dead spot of a throwaway pay per view. I disagree because you can't have a throwaway pay per view with only four a year. That's my point. <laughs> It feels like a throwaway. I, I, and I think you're crazy for calling this a throwaway pay per view. That's what I'm saying. Like, well, it's not. It, was a I, good it, match. it feels like it to me. It, it was a good match, and the right kid died. Like, I thought Tyler Ty was going to win 100 percent the whole time because she can go to Mexico. She wants to go to Mexico, and yeah, Ron to... just kind of got a belt, and that was it. And how do we take an offer? And yeah, and Ty coming back's perfect, and. I mean, maybe I think I think where Sleazy's getting is where Deanna's a double champion. She's been a champion for a long time. This should have felt like a bigger deal. Yeah, is what you're probably saying. This could have main evented. You no, give, give her no. No, 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 not not close. No, with the right build, yes, absolutely, it could have. Not with Moose. Not with Moose and John not not in this paper. Build. No, 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 no. Not on this show. You're you're absolutely right on that. Okay. But, a pay per view, <laughs> not this pay per view. But with the right, the right build, you could have made this a main event, you know, moment. Oh my God, Ty is back. She's taken the title of uh, somebody who really hasn't been beaten. By the way, this isn't going to be Deanna's last title loss. <laughs> so, well, of course not. But you see what see what I'm getting at? Does it felt like just? a throwaway moment on a pay-per-view that didn't matter as much as it should have, I guess. I, and, and maybe, I guess maybe I'm I being un, I unfair to saying. it. But I, to call it a throwaway pay-per-view, I mean, to call it a throwaway moment, I'll kind of agree with to Okay. Call it a throwaway pay-per-view, you're insane. Okay. I'll get, I'll give you that. Um, <laughs> but maybe, maybe calling it a throwaway pay-per-view is unfair, but it doesn't feel like that. It was this huge, huge deal. Does that, does that make it better? Okay. Yeah, I, I see your point in that. Ryan, you want to add anything? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yo, Excellent dog, I really like triple threat matches. Fuck you. Triple threat match for the Exhibition Championship. Uh, Trey Miguel versus uh, Speedball Mike Bailey versus Ace Austin. 10 minutes oh, and 12 seconds. You hated a match with Mike Bailey in it? Can hold you on. honestly say that, Sleazy? Hold, hold, I'm not done yet. Um, Andrew gave this three and three quarter stars. What a totally underrating piece of fucking shit. This match was fucking fantastic. Like, I went in thinking, you know what? You want this match did not need more flips and shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> this match had just the right amount of flips and shit. This match was fucking a spot fest like I thought it was going to be, and I fucking loved it. It's strange this, for it was, you, too, to love a spot fest realistically. Right. It was 10 minutes and 20 seconds. It didn't feel rushed, though. But it they did were... not feel rushed. It felt like the right amount of time. It felt everything in this match was absolutely fucking perfect. Four and three quarters. I can't go five because no selling. That's it. That's the only reason why I cannot go five stars. What a fucking awesome match. That sounds like your match of the year. It might be my match of the year right now. I have to go back through my notes. 
Oh, I, I 100% agree with everything you said. Just, I wish we did a video podcast sometimes so people watch and see the disdain on Sleazy's face as we're talking about a second <laughs> triple threat match at the carrot and a second triple threat match that was fucking amazing and had not the main event happen would have been match of the night. Oh, this is 100% my match. 100% this is my match of the night. I mean, was. We will was. discuss the main event, but like my reason. Fucker will say now. My reason for the main event is Josh Alexander getting his moment back in the story that they built. That's why that like they oh, came. Yeah, I, I, and you know what? I I can't disagree with that. Like I really can't. But we'll get to it. Sleazy, you love triple threat matches, as we alluded to so much on this show already. And you love Mike Bailey. So like, what's your problem? Absolutely nothing. There is no problem. <laughs> uh, Fat man's an underrating piece of shit. Underrated. Absolutely. <laughs> Fan fucking tastic. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this match, and therefore it is five stars. It is. There is one thing wrong. They didn't sell shit. I don't give a fuck what you <laughs> sit there and jack off in the corner about, but I'm going to tell you Sasha, this. Alexa. Well, oh, it's oh, definitely it's not got, Spot Fest. It's unplugged. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, but yeah, no, seriously, this was. You can't do anything to improve this you could only make it worse if it oh. was a little bit longer you would have made it worse if you uh if you made it shorter it would have made it worse if you put more people or different people in it you would have made it worse right kid died too 100 percent, yes three matches in the row they got the right the right person went over 100 percent. um and everyone in their brother knows i hate fucking triple threat matches it's been a forever trope for years. But one of the reasons why I hate triple threat matches did not happen in this is there was a lot more collaborative three-way dance style stuff. <laughs> so it, it minimizes the damage of the three-way that we, we talk that I talk so much shit about. So yeah, absolutely. This is fucking phenomenal. And anyone who says that it's not five stars can go fucking suck a dick and then step on a Lego. Uh, uh, uh wow 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 he he loved the triple threat match so much he stole my gimmick right well you're wrong because you're you're always wrong so i mean so since you said it it's wrong <laughs> i uh i can wholeheartedly agree that this has replaced the best triple threat match that has ever happened in tna impact history Ooh, yeah, I have to watch him back to back. I I would I, agree with. I, that. I know what you're. I know the match. I just don't remember the spots. So I'm gonna have to go back and watch it back to back. Oh, it's it, it might be close. You, it might be close. I loved AJ and Joe and Daniels, mm-hmm. right? They, but it's just this was the new age style. I call it like the fact that when that happened, it was. Oh shit! This is revolutionary it, it, for the style and the, the out of the time. And, yep, gotcha. Yep. Yeah, but now this is like okay, boss. We know people can do this shit, and they still did it. and It looked amazing. I hear, I hear doggy. I, I, um, how how do you how is that not perfection? It really is. no selling. Anyway, we go from can I say, uh, I, what I, no I'll selling match. It's fighting I spirit. Like, uh, you saying it's not rush means they clearly were selling. Because if they rushed it, there'd definitely be no selling. Right. What? Say that again? If you're rushing spot to spot, then you're definitely not selling. But it wasn't rushed. But it wasn't rushed, but it doesn't mean they were selling. They were they went to a spot to set up another spot. Not like they rushed they were rushing it into another spot. They took their time to get to a spot, but it doesn't mean they were selling the, the spot before. I just but they gotta kill the time. You can disagree, but I, watch the fucking match and you'll you'll know. We watch the fucking match, match. No you fucking piece of shit. You, you <laughs> sit here and, and you and you fucking fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. Go watch the so the fucking match. The right you now, fucking sorry. shit. You son of a bitch. <laughs> you go from one match with no selling to another match with no selling. That you know, I agree. This is terrible. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii, 14 minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, Andrew gave us three and a quarter. What an overrating piece of shit. Oh, I love this match, but I like this style, right? 
And I knew I was when I was watching this pay per view. I watched the first half of Kyle. I was like, "That man, he can't say shit about this cat." Like, I know he's definitely watching it. He's not gonna run about it. This match happened. I went, and there I lost that man. <laughs> I said it in the chat too. Chip's gonna love this match, but you know how I feel. Oh yeah, but I really enjoyed it. Both beat the fuck out of each other, and compared to the rest of the card. What a nice way to break it. Like, look at the styles of the card the whole time. Like, you just watch the spot fest and this and that, and then you get just a hard-hitting fucking match right after. It kind of brings you down but for excitement, but keeps your interest. It, like, it was perfectly placed, too, especially coming after that fucking three-way. Because what was following that three-way? Sasha. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, like, what was following yeah, that Yeah, no, three-way? nothing, nothing was going to follow that. So it it was a different style to follow. I understand the card placement on it, but not- this goes back once again to um, the Josh Jenner booking. You know, the three ring circus style. You had to have a little bit of different things for everything. And Fat Man's just not gonna love this type of match. That's fine. No. I <laughs> fucking loved it. It's obviously it's not as good as the Triple Threat. But it was a good four star match. I loved it. It's just beautiful. Um, it's two hosses. You. It's two no, hosses. No, no, no. Oh, get, oh, oh, get the fuck out of here! You get the fuck out of here! Get you fucking piece of shit! Fucking go sit F-T-T-T down and go touch your nose. Tell him out. Tell him out. You play. Hold on. You said you. You can't call him an overrated piece of shit because that would be a statistical number that please you throw out to a match like that where you wouldn't like it. That don't make him an overrated piece of shit. He's, He's overrated piece of shit. shit. He's overrated piece of shit. Fuck him. <laughs> fuck him. Fuck him. This was an okay match for a house show. Fuck wow. him. Wow. The fuck out of here. No selling. All it was is tops and forearms with one big German and it went fucking 15 minutes too long is a 14-minute match. Fucking fighting spirit. <laughs> but, but by the way, seriously though, it did go too long. They could have stayed about five minutes off this match. It would have been. I would agree with. Uh, to be to be fair. To be fair. To be fair, I would I would say it could have been shorter. But it's also a strong style match. It's it, this is New Japan at its finest. You mm-hmm. New Japan open weight division, strong style, just beating the ever. Fucking loving shit out of each other. It Calm was down, phenomenal. Shit. Calm no down. Wow. I like that style too, man. Holy shit. You know, you... I like a hard hitting match too, but if all they do is fucking No, you don't. That's that's bullshit. No, no, you no, know no. it. That's fucking bullshit. I feel like if it's physical, I like it, but if they're only doing chops and forearms, it gets a little fucking repetitive, Brock Lesnar. Calm down. I want to say that I don't think it's bullshit because wasn't your match of the year the same as everybody's match of the year last year in Walter and Dragunov? And that's exactly what that was. Yeah. It was not that. But not uh, that at all. Same breath, WWE does a lot better style of doing the strong style, but actually putting. So you're telling me that WWE does a better version of New Japan's own style? No, no, because it's a different type of strong style. It's British strong style, which is better than New Japan's strong style. It's different. It's, it's a different better. type of match. It's better. Because they do other moves and chops. It's better. Sleazy, you love tag team matches, don't you? Oh, God, no, I don't. No, that's the Ryan, team. you love tag team matches, don't you? I do! Okay, yay! I was trying to set it up. Eight-team elimination challenge for the Impact Tag Team Championships. Violent by Design defends against the major players. Jordan Grace and Big Ass. The Good Brothers. Johnny Swinger and Zicky Dice. Spot that's Monkey's product. 2 that, fa- that facial expression means you got to watch the product if you're like, who are they? <laughs> no, I know who no, they no, no. are. I-, I know who they are. It's just like, how did Zicky Dice actually make right. it to Impact? Trust me, he was on the show for like 30 seconds. If you watch the show, you know. Rick, yeah. Sh- Rick Schwann and Willie Max, Spot Monkey 2.0. I don't know more. And Heath and Rhino. Uh, went 32 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, Andrew gave us two and three quarters. Boo. That sounds very low. And I don't like star ratings. Oh. You're going to hate my fucking star rating then. Oh, wow. I, I, I brought up the elimination just so I can talk about the match as it unfolded. Because I figured the tag thing got. So, like, it started off with the major players and Jordan Grayson fucking big cast. And 
that's all been intertwined and interlocked for a storyline for a long time on Impact yep. Now. Cool mm-hmm. little opener. Out come the Good Brothers. The wait, 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 hold on. I want to touch on something. <laughs> when Big Cass did that power bomb, he one hundred percent was grabbing Towsy Green's titties. Like it was, it wasn't even close. Instead of picking her up by like that, he grabbed her titties and just went mm-hmm. <laughs> right down. I saw it. it. Was I was just like, "Wow, dude!" It was so funny, and also that was a mess. What that does whole, she like? Does she look know, too whole, much? Because like, the ref, like, they did they win by DQ or like the ref didn't even know what the fuck was like how they were winning. It was it. This just felt weird. Like that first segment just felt out of, I won't say out of place. It just felt discombobulated. How about that? Because that the point of that was the story that was connected, yeah. and as long as the major players uh, came out as the winners, like that was the whole. Being that you got, well, no, I, I, I get the story. I'm just saying, like the whole like presentation of it, like the ref didn't even seem to know what was going on. That's it was just weird. Uh, okay. Uh, then after that, the Good Brothers come out. They knocked out the major players. The Good Brothers then uh, quickly defeated Johnny Swinger and Dickie Dice, and then had a very I feel competitive match. With Rich Swan and Willie Mack. Okay. He said competitive, not good. Okay. No. Uh, So I like (laughs) the fact that right off the bat, your storyline was told right in the beginning of the match with the first teams. The Good Brothers come out, and in your typical tag team eliminator fashion, our dominant team, and what better team than the eight teams are in this now that are the Good Brothers to be that dominant team. Uh, After the Rich Swan and Willie Mack thing, Honor No More come out, and they've been playing the piece of shits perfectly since they showed up in Impact and get the win this way, and it looks fucking great, and it's cheap. And then out comes Heat and Rhino to beat the fucking cheap bastards. And then the last team being the tag champs. And they also have been connected forever in a storyline wise. And it was a perfect little ending. This was a dandy little ball wrapped of the tag team glory storyline run. It was great. It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The story per I, I just thought it could have been booked way better. Like I, I think you could have done a, just a big combobulated tornado match and have it just be just a mess, but a fun mess. You know what I mean? But this but was that, a fun mess. But no, it wasn't. It was the the Good Brothers uh, Swan and Mac segment went on way too long. It felt like it went on for 30 minutes. It probably went on for like seven. It just was just so long. I was just like, oh, what the fuck? This gets is over with. Like, and 16 people got a paycheck for this match, okay, man? No, 19 and I'm people. I'm all for that. 19 because... people. 16 people plus they had seven matches in 33 minutes. Yeah. Which is another reason why it sucked. This match is too long. This match is too long. This match is too long. Johnny Stricker, they didn't need to be in it. Jordan Gray, yeah, I understand like the whole... The, the whole storyline, the major plot. I get it. I understand all that part, but in, in it's your right, it's it wrapped up. You clearly don't up. understand it. <laughs> no, no. Here, here's, I, it did, ra- it did wrap up everything in a bow, but it just was like, I mean, here. it felt like they wanted to get it done and over with here and then just move on instead of trying to like prolong stuff. And the run, I don't know more show went over. I'm sorry, but they they're the team that should have won this. Here, they, here they, they're playing around. See, let let me uh, recap the two bald people on there. I actually agree with both of you in the sense that, <laughs> right? You I, sideways I, piece of shit. Right? Oh, you exactly. Have a sideways Lego. Oh, thank you. Um, I believe Ryan's absolutely one hundred percent correct in the fact that the the way they booked it in terms of how they actually did the, the the teams coming out and how they did all that stuff absolutely works. The problem was the execution. I the the matches in between just weren't all that good. And while there's something to be said about, you know, from a, a booking perspective that you could have done other things that probably would have made just as much sense, I think doing the eliminator actually makes it feel better. But I also believe that they should have given more time to more pieces of this match. They, and it just, it, the execution was short and I don't think they, they could have done, they could have done way more with what they. Well, they left this match with five teams having somewhat of a shine realistically. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, and, and I'm not saying that they didn't do that. It's just that the execution of each segment of the Eliminator left a little to be desired. That's all. Wrong kids died. No. And also, by the way, Jonah, easy, wrong kid died. Um, I do agree oh, with Jonah that. Jonah should have won. Jonah should have won. Jonah absolutely should have won. I, I agree with that. Okay. Please, you want, okay, you're done? Talk about it? Good. No, that, that, that you guys basically no, figured okay. it what I was doing. Uh, knockouts Women's Championship, because there's a Knockouts Men's Championship, I guess. Uh, Tasha Steele's defense against Rosemary, uh, 12 minutes. Andrew gave us two and three quarters. Please, you're the one, Justin. I, I thought it was good. Um, I It's a little bit more than that. I mean, three stars for me. But I don't know. It just, of the two singles women's matches, while this is the knockouts title, it didn't feel as important as the other singles. So I don't know. It just, it felt <clears throat> kind of off because of that. I, I, I agree. I, I think this one kind of was like a step. It felt less important, but I think this was the, I gave it the same rate. I gave it three stars too. Um, <clears throat> it was sloppy at times, but when it got good, it got good. Um, and this is where I kind of, put in the chat oh look the aw referee showed up when rosemary's or tasha steel's leg was 100 percent underneath rosemary's shoulder and rosemary's shoulder was like a foot off the ground reps it's like yeah let's fucking count that was the finish might as well count three <clears throat> i feel like the only, match, reason, though, but the only but, reason the other match felt bigger was not because of the belt it was because of the people in the match that could be too yes Right, because like even this now is not it's not they call it the mm. knockout world title. You know what I mean? Like to them, especially after the Mickey James thing with Raw. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with that to an extent, but that's not what I was hoping for. It was a little extent. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> here here, it it kind of reminds me, and I, and this is going to sound so terrible, and it's not any disrespect to Impact or any random indie that I'm about to bring up. If you have Wait, 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 wait. Random in India I'm about to bring up. So he has an Indian mind. So Already, yeah. Just <laughs> oh, it, it's good. <laughs> well, one of them it, did did this all the time was 2CW, actually. Where, where <laughs> who was the 2CW champion Nick half, Nick halfway Ando. through? the Yeah, Nick Ando. He was on right at the end of the first half when he defended his belt. And well, the real main event was the real... <laughs> You know, it was the Wolves versus the Motor City Machine Guns. Okay, but so the undercard was the the main champion. So I, I mean, think Ryan's going to back me up on this, and there's a reason they do that. Is because they're they want to sell tickets at intermission. Yeah. So they set up the angle before intermission to sell tickets at intermission. Yeah. I but, mean, I I I get it. Yeah, but it's it makes it not as important. Your main I, title I, should be the I last. Disagree last match on the card i think unless there's a super duper different reason for that so So that 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 example kevin steen should have made event of that show what's that you're telling me that aj styles and kevin steen should not have made event of that show no absolutely they should have okay no no, i'm not saying i'm not saying that that's the case but i i'm making the point i'm making the allegory to this show where they thought the title was more important than the participants, so therefore they put it up higher up on the show than the two actual, with all due respect to Tasha Steele's Rosemary, two more important people. Well, you're also at the same time thinking that in your th- thing, both women's matches were in the dead spots. Yeah, and I absolutely agree with that. I think <clears throat> that the two should have swapped. No. Oh, yeah. No. Because if you had to put the Adam Perez on t- uh, and Tony Valkyrie on later, and and just we'll play the hypothetical era, okay. and they have an absolute fucking banger like they could, your main event's going to start flat. Tasha Steeles and Rosemary, Rosemary in that position, for all intents and purposes, even if they have a banger, I I disagree. I disagree in this case because of the in this case because of the story between Moose and Josh Alexander. Yeah, there's think, nothing that's going to eclipse that. I, I think that, but I would normally agree with you, Ryan, where like that would be I, I I I get that. But in this case, I don't think it would matter. But they're both good matches. And I think putting I think I 
think I heard somebody say is maybe I'm 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 because I was doing some stuff on the tablet. Was Tasha? You put Tasha Steele's higher on the card because it's the knockout chain and you want to give her more recognition. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I think that I think they're trying to make sure that in this case the title's making the woman because of I, how because of how you because you you literally just said it is that there was such a rub from Mickey James holding it and bringing it to Raw. Uh, uh, okay, but I think you're wrong because didn't she win the first women's X division or ultimate X match? Tasha like, Steels, yeah. So they're, they're mm-hmm. pushing her. They were pushing her before. like Former, former beat, two-time knockouts champion. Yeah, and she beat Mick, Mickey James. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like... And she beat a very capable her. opponent in Rosemary, too. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like it, <clears throat> at least not to me. I, and I, I don't know why that's the case, honestly. It just doesn't. She doesn't. Oh, my goodness. I hate saying this because it, it, it feels bad for saying this. But she doesn't feel like a champion. Ryan, he said that, right? Yeah, I heard what he said. I don't understand so, so why he's wrong. said it. So he's wrong. I, don't, uh, yeah, I don't understand why he said it, but yeah, I heard see, what he said. I knew that was coming. And yet, <laughs> okay. said it anyway. Ryan, what do you think of the match? Uh, I really thought about this match going in. It wasn't going to be as good as what it was. Especially, I, like, I didn't have many hopes for it, I'll say. And it's not that I don't like Tasha Steels, I don't like Rosemary. Like, I know they're going to have these matches, but I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Right. And I agree. I thought it would be, eh, and it turned out to be a good match. Like, and again, it was sloppy at times, but it, it turned out to be really, really good. Not really, really good. It's going to be a good match. And um, I'm liking Tasha Seals as your, as your champion. I think he's perfect for it right now. So, all well, right. Main event. Impact World Championship. Moose. iPhone. Thank you. Defends against Josh Alexander. 23 minutes and 55 seconds. Andrew gave this four and a half star. Sleazy. Fucking phenomenal. I mean. Yeah, had... I want none. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, I think that. In any other circumstance, this would have been match of the night in a walk. Pretty much any other Impact pay-per-view. Only because that triple threat match was so fucking phenomenal. Does this, you know, just kind of get pushed down a little bit. But it was four still... 4.99. Right? <laughs> I, 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 I gave it four and a half stars as well. Uh, I think that the story they told, the... The, the emotion within it, the feeling of it. Now, keep in mind, two weeks ago, Josh was in Binghamton working Dan Barry in this fucking hilarious comedy match. So to go from that match with 40 wrestlers watching this fucking phenomenal comedy match to this fucking emotional beautiful match is just a testament to how good Josh Alexander is. And I absolutely give him like 80% of the credit here. And and, and that's not taking away anything from Moose. It's just I that, love. thank you. But it, it, it just shows how much emotion there was with Josh and how they put this thing together. And it was just fucking mwah, just amazing. Him sparing his wife. <laughs> really? So, oh, oh, I my gave God. this. I gave it four and a quarter, and the only reason you gave it a quarter star more because Josh Alexander has a hot Asian wife. Yes, thank you for bringing that's, that up. I wasn't going it. to do it, and that's, it, that's the only reason why you gave it a quarter star more, and nothing to do with the match. <laughs> it's because he has a hot Asian wife. That's right. And, and the and, and the Asian finally got to a main event, so it was good. Like, <laughs> not the only fucking Asian on the show, or hot Asian wife on the show. So, um, I, obviously, I thought it was great. Um, again, selling. I I I understood what they were doing with Alexander and the emotion, and he comes back up at the big and but and then Moose knows selling a fucking ankle lock that he was in for like nine thousand years. Like, I'm just like. God damn it, guys. But that's kind of, I shouldn't be disappointed because that's kind of the style that is now going around. But 
I'm just Bruce Pritchard, I guess, old school. Sell. Just give me selling. Like, but I guess but you're fun at great. parties. It was so fucking great. Josh Alexander is fucking awesome and he'll continue to be awesome and he'll have an awesome run. I'm just looking to see. I have not watched. Wait, Impact hasn't happened yet. So I can't say I have not watched Impact yet <laughs> to see if they set up anything. But Oh, I, it, I can spoil all that for you right the fuck now. Oh, yeah, that's right. They taped it. <laughs> yeah, they taped yeah. it already, didn't they? The yeah, for the, yeah. The exactly what's coming up, right? Do, 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 do. So, so while he's looking it up, uh, we're going to uh, uh, take it to break. Uh, we'll be back right after this. All right, we're back, folks. Uh, so while we were off, I was jacking it to Hot Asian Wives. Uh, and from the corner because the rehab didn't work. Um, does it ever? I mean, you keep going. I don't know why the fuck. They um, keep paying for it, so why not? Thank you, WWE. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, Josh and Moose will have another match that happened at the taping. Uh, it happened at the taping or at yeah. the, their next... So like as in they, they got the, the taping. Like if the taping is all the matches, and they try to say whatever little bits. So without being a dick and spoiler, it, it's they do have another match during the taping. Josh okay. Alexander versus Moose. After the match, the champion has a stare down with uh, Ishi. So that's why Ishi went over. Oh, there you go. So Alexander versus Ishi. I don't care if you can spoil it. I don't fuck the, the our multitude of fans probably doesn't even watch Impact. Oh, Josh Alexander. Yeah, the assuming game. Alexander went over. Yeah. So Alexander, that you know what? As much as I hate the strong style, that could be fucking balls to the wall. Mm-hmm. This is the taping the Briscoes worked. Oh, ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> the Briscoe, yeah, the Briscoes are signed for the taping. There's a segment between them, Heath and Rhino, and Vaughn by design, leading to a match between the Briscoes and Rhino. Briscoes go over. I don't know more. Beats the Motor City Machine Guns and Mike Bailey, and the bullet come out. The bullet club comes out to further that storyline. Now this is just the matches, whatever they're going to show backstage stuff. Like, yeah, right, gotcha. Yeah, and sometimes, and sometimes Ace they Austin tape that beat, stuff after the fact too. So yeah, Ace Austin beat Rocky Romero for the exhibition title, and him and Trey Miguel is set for under siege. The coolest fucking tag name ever, Beyblade, with this Chris Bay and <laughs> I love it. Hey, <laughs> uh, beat some the soldiers and then more. I don't know more Bullet Club stuff. Wait, the soldiers. Ishii I thought fucking beat... New Jack is dead. New Jack? You said the soldiers, right? S O U L J A S is how it's spelled. Different soldiers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Ishii beats Steve Macklin, which is probably going to end up being a nice little match. Mm-hmm. And uh, look, the last match from that day of taping was PCO defeats Jonah. Wrong There's still guy there. <sighs> Wrong Gotta get his win then. back. Mm. Gotta get his win back. Okay, overall thoughts on the show is another good fucking impact show, man. Like they're 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 coming out with bangers. Uh, thank you. I love it. If they're they are it's if it keeps going like this and nobody's still paying attention to impact, I'm telling you, they're 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 my front runner for the Cesaro award this year. Everybody. The yeah. whole the whole just the, whole, just the impact whole roster entire thing. <laughs> impact roster. Cesaro award for under in, impact, like even everybody that's behind impact because impact is so good now. Even when you want, uh, it was like when you watch the regular TV show mm-hmm. and just like pay attention, like how everybody else does their little extra stuff, your promos and your vignettes and how it gets shared. Like all of the impact is just hitting on every cylinder now, and it, it's a little engine that could, but nobody's taking Talk the train about. rod, yeah. All right, it's good news and rumors. I don't have much, but I saved a piece of information because Sleazy was in rehab, and I know Sleazy wanted to talk about this and wanted to bury the fuck out of Tony Khan. And I wanted- Dixie Khan. Dixie, Dixie Khan. Khan. I'm sorry, Dixie Khan. <laughs> um, so Tony Khan put out a tweet on April 8th, and this is the tweet. An independent study has confirmed that much of the um, staunch – Anti-AEW online community aren't real individuals. It's a staff running thousands of accounts plus an army of bots to single to signal boost them. Look closely. They aren't real people. Who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing? 
I don't know. For one, you just paid forty million for a company that's worth five. Anyway, go ahead, Sleazy. Oh God, the and he he continues on too. He gets called yeah, out. Yeah, it does. I got, I got, I got multiple I got times. I got, I got that. I got that right here. I got. Okay. Oh, you want me to keep going and then go? Okay, yeah, so, go for it. Blah 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 blah. Uh, Tony Khan said to TVInsider.com because he has to be on every fucking thing. What I've seen a lot of anti AEW accounts that are really focused on the things they don't like. What? A lot of. The, <laughs> A lot of the things are legitimate things, but they're bots. <laughs> Some of these points I'm trying to address. Some of them I don't agree with, but the point is okay. Some of these things are legitimate things, but so many things he doesn't. But they, but he doesn't agree with. Just because he doesn't he agree with him, like Dave Meltzer every fucking day. <laughs> well, but him and Dave is, are fucking friends, apparently. But the point is, a lot of these are the same people. There are a handful of accounts that are being run by the by. A few people running a lot of accounts. These are real people. A lot of their engagement, their tweets, likes, people's responding, and signal boosting for what they're saying, those are bots. You got a network of a few people with a lot of identities powering by powered by a bunch of bots. I'm not making this up. I hired I have hired IT experts that put together a much more sophisticated example or much more sophisticated explanation than I'm capable of giving. Well, okay, let, let's... <sighs> Mr. IT guy, go ahead. Okay, so let, let's start with why Twitter is a thing. Okay, and we're going to ignore the fact that, spoiler, Elon Musk bought Twitter. Twitter and da, da, da. If he were offering you $40 billion for it, it'd be like, cash. Cash, now. please. Oh, yes. Now. You're <laughs> all yours, you motherfucker. Stupid, you did <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. But... I guess, um, so one of the things that's um, always been prevalent on Twitter was that you could legitimately, or illegitimately, depending on who you talk to, uh, purchase a certain amount of likes for a post, or a certain amount of retweets for a post, or um, that kind of stuff, or followers. And, and it's actually surprisingly common. There are There are definitely... I don't want to say companies because that's giving them too much credit, but there's a bunch of people in India, China, what that have a bunch of shill accounts that they use that you pay this person $10 and they'll go and like a thousand, your, your post a thousand times. So that does happen. That is legitimate. That does happen. You can do the same thing with followers. You can purchase for $25, 500 followers. And, uh, the reason why I bring this up is because what Tony Khan is talking about is actually true. That is very possible. The problem with what Tony Khan is talking about is that he's claiming that it's way more than what it is. He's overstating the fact that some big company's trying to take him down by thousands and thousands of retweets of shit that even in his own uh, in his own statements, some of them are true. He, they're they're not as good as what they thought it was going to be, or it doesn't it didn't work the way they wanted. But WWE's not going to do that. That's the, the the alluding thing. And Ryan will absolutely sit here and st stand up, right up next to me and say this: it's going to be a bunch of assholes on Reddit and that are just fucking just a uh, fed chills, just doing they're this doing kind of it. shit. <coughs> Because they want more to. Of it. There's going to be more of it now because you fucking did that. I, yeah, there's a sense because of strides in effect here in play. And, and I would agree with that to an extent. But I think, I think the problem isn't the fact that it was happening. I think the problem is that he's attributing it to WWE themselves doing it. And that's my biggest objection about all of is, this. Is he? I don't. I don't think he said anything about WWE. Yeah, he he. In one of the later tweets, he said, "Well, who who uh, would oh, spend who, millions who would of dollars for this?" Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well, the thing is that nobody's spending millions of dollars for this. They're getting it pennies on the fucking like m fractions of a cent per like. I mean, I can go I, and I legitimately said this earlier. I can go out and have somebody give me ten thousand likes for five bucks. Come on, you know, it, are they going to be legitimate likes? Absolutely not. 
but it's going to look good. You're going to see a user engagement sh- shoot up. But at the end of the day, it's not costing millions of dollars. It's costing maybe 50. I, I, think, my, I think my problem with it is that when he said it, he hired someone to do it. Which is and stupid. Came, and then he came out and said it. Now you're interacting with the trolls, which you do not do. You don't feed the trolls. Don't, don't, don't. But then he goes on to say, some of their concerns are legitimate. And then says something like, what I, I, I had a head on the website, but some of their concerns are legitimate, but some of them are, but he doesn't know if they're re- like real. Like, I don't know. I, I, I read He's right, though. He, he, he is right that a lot of them are not real people when they're doing likes and retweets. No, no I, I don't get that, but he just contradicts himself like three times in like the same sentence. Right. He's, like, he's, he's trying to justify the fact that he spent 25 grand on an IT guy to tell him that somebody bought a bunch of likes. <laughs> That's what he's for five bucks. For five bucks. But he doesn't want to say that out loud because or, at the end of the day, I could have said that. Or don't fucking say it. Like, just don't say it. it yeah. He is yeah. asinine. It which is. means he's spending time on Twitter looking at negative tweets. He's taking time out of his day to do that. And then hired a company to see if they were real. Okay, that's, so dude, that's fucking paranoid delusional. I, shit right there. I, I have to back off on that because a lot of YouTubers get in that same realm, especially when they haven't been public figures that long. And Tony Khan, whether you like him or hate him, he's been more of a public figure because of AEW. And I agree with that. I'm and, not saying anything like that. Well, the the thing is that when you become a public figure, like and and you and I don't have this problem because after ten years we have one fucking follower, but. <laughs> When you get enough of a slew of... I, I, I see what you're going to Google yourself. You're going to do, like, yeah, you're going to see what comes up. Like, well, yeah, but there's like also going to be a certain... Do that about, about performances and, like, stuff like that. I, I get it. Yeah, but like, the other part of that is there's always going to be a certain subset of that people that are just going to shit on you because they're just fucking trolls, and that's what they do. And he's feeding into that, and that's a problem. Right. And but I'm it's saying, common so like, that it happens. I'm not saying it's not. Yeah. I'm just saying he... Sh- He's delusional and paranoid. He shouldn't be fucking doing it. I, yeah, I wouldn't go right. that he far. Probably is common. Yeah, he probably is common, but just don't do it. Focus on what you need to focus on. This is not what you need to focus on. I, I, I focus agree on with that. Who it is. I agree with that's, that. That's who AEW caters to. Everybody knows it. That's why AEW is the way it is. And that's why AEW is always going to be around because AEW will cater to these people that will be. That that demographic is always going to be there. Once people get sick of the cartoony style of WWE, I'll call it the style of AEW that they do it with Tony Khan because he's always going to want to play fucking wrestler. I mean, he is the ultimate fantasy booker. Holy fuck, he got money to burn. Like he's just bored. Yeah, right. And and again, good for the people that go to AEW to make that money to work one day a week, sometimes less. <laughs> Like they're just now right now they're just like I'll just go to AEW work fucking one show. Yeah. We had a contract for three years, work one show, get guaranteed money. Fuck. Cool. Fun and I get to work indie dates. And what? I get to work indie dates. Fun. So I'm not getting ring rust, I'm getting guaranteed money, and I get to make money on the side. Cool. Fun story about that. The one person that is working way more than normal is Adam Cole. Out of the forty what was it? out of the forty two dates of of uh, his AEW contract since it started, he's worked like 37 of them. No, ah, uh, fuck. Well, no, it was out of 33 weeks, he's wrestled 27 matches. Yeah, it's something like weeks. that. It's something high, like, level of for the number AEW, for what he was. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous for what it is. Okay, uh, let's move on from Tony Khan being paranoid. <laughs> um, update on Sonny. Remember, she killed a guy. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ. I heard rumors. Oh. Yeah, I did. I've heard rumors. <laughs> <laughs> and then the she got man? drunk and drove and hit somebody else. My journalistic skills man? brought me to an article about this. Yes. What about it? <laughs> In the aftermath of the incident, a lawsuit was filed against uh, Sonny and her boyfriend, James F. Pentit. I fucking give a shit how to pronounce his name. On April 12th, before the circuit court of the seventh ju- judicial circuit in Florida uh, by the estate of Jillian L. Uh, Lassiter. Um, 
The lawsuit alleges that Stitch was intoxicated and was operating her boyfriend's vehicle with his consent. It also claimed that uh, Stitch uh, negligently operated and maintained her motor vehicle, which led to the incident and th- and the death. Uh, for the first time, Sonny publicly commented on the incident. Here's an exchange on Twitter <laughs> between a fan and Sonny. Fan, question for you. How fast were you going when you slammed it to the poor old guy? He stopped at a stoplight and killed him. His life ended for what reason? Where were you going? To a fire? Were you drunk? Hi? <laughs> Sonny. Mm, about 10 since I was slowing down at the light, but he had a heart attack. That's how he died. Okay, so fun story, fun law story for you. Or oh, law God. question. So a guy jumps off a building 50 stories up, he's going down to the ground. As he's coming down to the ground, you take a gun, you shoot him, hits him in the head. What are you guilty of? Murder. No. Some courts will say that. No, no courts will say this. It's Some act- courts will say it. Or at none. It's not. <laughs> so it's a legal doctrine in terms of how, because it was certain that the guy was going to die. No matter. You're actually guilty of attempted murder. And, okay. You're and, guilty of something. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Obviously. But, but here's the thing. You're assuming he's going to die of the heart attack. Well, that's the other thing is that, you take your victims if, as they go. <laughs> you if know, he had a heart attack. Le, no, like for instance, if I'm having a heart attack, and well, here here's another thing: if you hit me in the face, and that causes a heart attack, and I die from the heart attack, you're still guilty of felony murder. Yep. Yep. So it doesn't matter if he had the heart attack or not. Yep. You know, right. if your direct action caused his death, like he she probably was, he was probably in the walkway. He was probably coming. He probably got scared that he wasn't going to slow down. He had a heart attack. If that's what happened. If that's what happened. Sonny was coming? Oh, that that sound. 20 years ago, you were thought differently. Yeah, well, 20 years does a lot to a woman when you do a lot of hard drugs and drinking. Bret Hart apparently signs with WWE. Are we sure Uh, of that? According to... Rock Dave Meltzer. Meltzer. Bret Hart has, quote, quietly signed a lucrative WWE deal that would seemingly prevent Hart from appearing with AEW, such as the finals of the Owen Hart tournament at Double or Nothing. I was told, this is from Meltzer, I was told that AEW believes that Bret cannot work for them because of a WWE deal. Bret has a legend contract with WWE. I don't know what it restricts. I call bullshit because AEW and WWE have done something together before. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I'm not positive as if it's stopping Brett from appearing in AEW. He definitely has a Legends deal and a merchandise deal with WWE. So he is under contract there, but I don't know what the steps is as far as related to AEW. AEW leaves that they cannot use him, but I'll know if that's the case or not by the end of the week. Of course you will, Dave. This was on one week ago. So you did not know by the end of the week, you fucking bitch. Uh, more quotes from Meltzer. Obviously, I know that Brett and Martha have had their issues, but it would be something. Okay. <laughs> I actually asked Brett that when I contacted him a few days ago, you know, I was just like, can you do it? Because it would be cool for him to be in Vegas for the finals of the tournament. I think it would just be nice, uh, symbolic thing. And he was just like, they haven't asked me. That's what he said. But I think that would be something cool. The key is Martha and everything. Okay, so you asked him. But you would know by the end of the week. How much bullshit is in this fucking thing right here? Like 100%, 150? My head hurts. I think it's funny that all of this kind of came about when Bret Hart, who FTR has been begging and begging and begging to do something with, is managing them in a random indie show, not AEW. That's where all of this is coming from. Yep. And the random indie show, by the way, is Northeast Rock. Yep. Just an FYI, man. I knew from that, let alone fucking Canada and whatever going on in the Indies and the States with our ER cells. <laughs> yeah. What He's like, fuck your kids. Fuck your um, kids. Update on the brand split. According to... Fuck, fuck Dave man. Meltzer. What? Wait, what? Fuck that man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I will come up to Canada. You will do will no such you. thing. I will hug you and then I'll kick you in the ovary. 
Uh, WB currently has no plans for Raw SmackDown to merge. Plans Why can and often do change, but the idea of, of it as this week, last week, there will be the undisputed tag team champions come out of WrestleMania Backlash. There will still be two blunt brands. Both champions work both shows, and Reigns will do, which Reigns has done since WrestleMania. Okay. Cool. Now, it's still funny with that because currently both those singles titles are still active, and both those tag titles are still going to be active. So, yes. whoever, right, unless they do a. They didn't unify, they didn't like unify the titles. They didn't they're make separate. one title. Yeah. yeah, they're still separate titles. Um, so the question leads, how do you, like, will somebody win that and get two world titles out of it or two tag total reigns out of it before they split them? They, there's your A or B, yeah. If um, it's reigns, he flies past, like, Orton's at 14 now, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Orton beats Reigns during this current run and wins the Unified. That's two titles and ties him with Flair and Cena. Technically, yes, but they probably won't do it that way. They'll probably only count as. But you, you are right. Since but there is two titles, titles. I yeah. know. Yeah, I know. But that's not how WWE's going to do it, though. You know that's how WWE's not going to do it. Okay, I just got a few more. Apparently, GCW. Oh, can, and, uh, can I really before because we haven't really talked about it since this, and I was going to bring it up last week. How how bad is uh Roman Reigns' shoulder? How bad is Roman is what shoulder? Oh man, it's, it's hurt so bad that he has to forfeit the titles. Right? Yeah, yeah. How fucked up was his shoulder then? It's out. Don't you remember? It was out. So, a guy who notoriously lies, lied. Wow. Dude. Wow! Anyone uh, uh, go back a couple weeks to our couple episodes ago when we talked about it, and I had two fucking marks sitting here going, "Oh yeah, it's going to be a legit injury." That One of which that. was on this call. Yes, go back and listen, you fucking mark. I said that's I why I'm bringing it up now. Injury. The only other mark that's on here isn't on this call tonight. Yeah, I don't think I said that. Yeah, I, you, I, since I, since I, you said I said it, it didn't happen. So. Yeah, well, the nice part is you can go back in the Wrestling Show archives on Spotify or anywhere ever you get your uh, wonderful podcasts and, and check that stuff out because, yeah. you know, You're Fat Man's a lying piece way, of I shit right now. I fucking set you up for the plug. You, you, at least you fucking, I T-balled it up for you. Yeah, and I swung. I swung. I missed because you sucked. So what? Whatever. Anyway, Here, two more pieces. how I play the taco. Through. Here's how I be taco of the wrestling show. Uh, well, that was my opinion. I I, I, I I didn't go back, but I knew one of you were going to go back and listen to the opinions of everybody. What? Oh, yeah. D- you were on my side. It wasn't work. It was just a shitty fucking thing. A <laughs> shitty, shitty fucking finish. Yeah, I, I don't, now I don't believe you. Yeah, go, go. Like, I was teeing you up for, go, for, the, for the plug, but I don't go, believe you. Go back and listen to our WrestleMania Night 2 show. I will not go back to the EBDB DMB and B. I almost fucked that up. <laughs> almost fucked it up. Good. Hey, you pulled it through, so. Unlike Roman's pulled shoulder. Oh, yeah. So, AEW, New Japan, the big announcement was joint show, which they've been doing anyway. Well, they didn't do uh, an official joint show yet. So, June 26th, my mommy's birthday, and I will actually be away i'll be out of town that day um the fuck are you going i'm going to lake placid um fuck you you're not coming with me to chicago you aren't going to chicago anyways it don't matter i'm going Um, to chicago in about 24 hours if you are listening to this live i will still be in chicago for like another day (laughs) we gotta talk about plans for our trip oh we will talk about that Next AW uh, on the Forbidden show. Door, June 26th. It's a Sunday. It's a nice under Chicago. Thoughts? I want to go. Legitimately, cool. I want to go. Um, I'm it, I'm, again, I'll be out of town. I, 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 can't, I cannot be in two places at once. So. Yeah, I know. What I else mean, is new? Missing an AEW show. Shock of shocks. That's Fat Man's MO lately. Sleazy. Listen. Yes. Pandemic. Our- and then I was actually funny, ironically, in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. See, this is what happened. 
Aren't but they're we- coming back to Rochester, so we can go then and stay up till midnight, and I'll have to work the next morning. He ain't going. I'm going. I'll take the day off. Uh, I'm just saying, you throw a Canadian amount of money at me to make uh, Chicago work in June, and I'm just going to see what I got to do to come up with the Canadian amount of money that I need to make it happen. <laughs> well, the nice <laughs> part real. the nice part for you is that as long as you can get to the border, I'll get you the rest of the Right. So that's, that's, that's going to be. It's just here, I'm going to pick up that big fat guy. Nothing's up his ass, I swear to God. Well, he's just got to walk across the border, and that's it. He doesn't have to know. They don't have to know I'm picking some asshole up from Canada. Oh. At least. How, how are you going to swim? You're not going to be scared of me. I'm just going to be a happy, giggly, smiley stone, or just be like, pat me down. I got no drugs on me. I don't know the rules. This time. I'll find my drugs on this side, sir. Thank just you very don't, much. <laughs> just don't fart. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> well, the funny uh, part is, he. here's the best part about this. In Canada, it's legal, obviously, for pot. In New York, it's legal for pot, but you can't cross the border from Canada to New York with any pot. Yeah, right. It's legal to smoke it, and it's not, but it's not legal to sell it. Yeah, you can have it though. You can you possess can have, it. You can have a certain amount of it. Right, it's an ounce. But but the point is that even if you only had an ounce, you can't cross the border with it. Right. Even it's, though it's yeah. legal on both sides. Yeah, okay, you stand here, buddy. I'm going to play catch with myself and throw this bag over this Woo! imaginary line. Woo! Woo! Uh, Pat Mac. Okay. Pat and, Mac- hold on, because I wanted to go back to actually talk about this for a second. If what I heard is true, I don't like the idea of its AEW. Oh, yeah. A- I'm sorry. I wrote that down. AEW versus New Japan. Yeah. Eh, I, I, I'd still go in the premise of wanting to go, but compared to I'd like to see. A big AEW match, a big New Japan match. You know what I mean? Like even it out. I don't want all just AEW versus New Japan. I want some AEW and AEW New Japan versus New Japan. But give me the main storylines, if anything. But don't just do all one versus the other. I oh, agree with that. The, there was a fucking mouse there. I love it. So they there was an update about Okada possibly going to the show. Well, apparently his wife's birthday is June twenty eighth. And he's like, oh, I don't know if I can make the show. I want to be in Japan with my wife on June 28th. And Mouser's like, oh, he's just joking around. He'll be at the show. Yeah, that was my reaction, too. Like, How do we fucking do this show anymore? You know, Pat I... McAvee's in talks to join uh, Thursday Night Football on Amazon, cool. which will not be, which will not interfere with his WWE duties. Cool. Which is deadly. And one more. Uh, apparently, GCW and Internet uh, or uh, Independent Wrestling TV settled their lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Brilliant! I love it. I didn't even know they had a lawsuit. Then it was I a pretty big one. Up. Yeah, I see. Um, <clears throat> uh, some of those reach on Internet Wrestling TV's lawsuit against Game Team Wrestling. Uh, IWTV filed a lawsuit in June 2021, alleging that uh, GCW committed a breach of contract. Excuse me, over pay per view events, claiming that they had. Exclusive rights to film, produce, and digitally distribute GCW pay-per-views. GCW began airing events on Fight TV in December 2020, which led to the lawsuit. Uh, IWTV originally claimed an estimate of 500000 in lost revenue. The 2021 lawsuit filed in Pennsylvania court said GCW held 36 pay-per-view events between December 5th and uh, March 15th, all of which were a violation of the agreement. IWTV said they... Notified GCW about the breach, but GCW kept promoting shows. Very GCW of them. Yeah. <laughs> Other damages uh, were in excess of five hundred thousand, but cannot be fully calculated because GCW provided until GCW provided revenue for those shows. GCW tweeted uh, that they were formally requesting the release from their contract, which they out of sadness and regret, and added there was apparently no other option even though they were running shows on fight. Um, weird. Well, there's uh, no other option but to run shows on fight because they wouldn't right. be uh, getting out of the IW, contract. Yeah. Uh, IWTV filed a lawsuit a few months later. GCW had filed to have the suit dismissed back in August. In an update, GCW announced today a settlement has been reached and the lawsuit is over. IWTV will reportedly not receive any compensation or compensation and damages, and GCW will retain ownership of all content. Furthermore, as part of the agreement, and this is what I fucking love, GCW will provide internet or uh, independent wrestling.tv with the settlement series. Yeah. 
over the next year, which will consist of eight live events. That's that great. That is fucking brilliant. That is the <laughs> most carny fucking thing in the world, and I love 100%, it. One hundred percent. I fucking hate carnies, but that's fucking awesome. One hundred percent. Absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. I, I, I applaud both of them for being carny pieces of trash in figuring out what they needed to do. Um, I love the fact that they're going to do this and just in general enjoy that's life. Just fucking great. That's just fucking great. Uh, cool. Ryan, what you plowing? Ah, uh, fuck Reddit and fuck the wrestling show on Reddit and fuck all those Reddit idiots that are idiots on Reddit that I got to read all the time because I'm an idiot seeker. Fucking fed <laughs> So fuck the internet. <laughs> I'm at TWS Sleazy. TWS Fat Man. And the wrestling show is on all sorts of things at Sleazy Fat Man on Twitter and Instagram. We're at the wrestling show on TikTok and all this other cool shit. You've got all wonderful websites like the wrestling show.com, which will eventually be fixed and solved eventually when I get around to it. You can find our show and everybody else shows that are a part of the gear network at gearnetwork.com. You can download this wonderful episode as well as everybody else's episodes on gear network, wherever you get your wonderful podcasts. Um, that's pretty much it for the show. So with thanks to Ryan, fuck chip for not showing up. And as always for sleazy, for the fat man. This is the wrestling show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Peace. Fuck Ken Omega. Fuck Dave Meltzer. A hot dog's not a sandwich. Sleazy. Really. Stop going to rehab. Like, really stop going to rehab? Like, stop her methodism. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. I'm a truth that you seem to run from. I'm an army of one. I'm a clip in your gun. I'm the pain, the pain of the game, the blood shed in your name. When there's nothing to gain, I'm a world of The preceding presentation has been brought to you by The Gear Network.